So you just bought the Invisigig, you've got it in your hands, now you really want to know, well, what do I do with it? I'm going to help you get it put together and ready to start setting up so that you can get online super simple, crazy fast. So there's a pretty good chance you received your Invisigig in some form of packaging. And so you'll need to obviously carefully remove your Invisigig from the packaging. There will be informational inserts most likely in your package with QR codes and links for help and support. And your Invisigig should be carefully wrapped up inside. Remove the sleeve of your Invisigig. Make note of the serial number of your device. And also note that there's a label on the back that has your serial number as well as your device's IMEI and relevant information. On one end of the packaging, there should be a sticker over the flap that allows you to open it up. You'll want to cut the sticker that comes on yours, raise the flap on one end here. You'll notice the other end does not have such a flap. Raise this up and open your packaging to see what's inside. Ready for speed? Let's go. There's a couple of inserts in here for warranty information and other relevant information, as well as the default password and basic information about your Invisigig. You should go over this to learn a little bit more about each and every little piece of the physical product that is the Invisigig. Inside, you'll find your Invisigig right in on the top. This is the main unit that is right on top. You'll notice on here that you have SMA style connectors for antenna ports. These are SMA female connectors that are standard for modem connections to connect indoor as well as outdoor antenna cables and antennas. On the top, we have a fan port. It's best not to block this in any way. Inside, we have our Noctua fans. And on the sides, we have ports for airflow as well. On the front, you have your ports for power as well as Ethernet. And then you have your LEDs here for status indicators. On the bottom, we have our label as well as M6 screw holes for mounting and various purposes. And then the rubber feet for good grip. And that is the entirety of the Invisigig unit itself. Inside the box, you can lift up the insert that holds the Invisigig, set that aside, and there will be a box inside here that has a few parts and pieces inside, an Ethernet cable for easy use of setup as well as connection, and then a few various items, SIM card holders inside this little card are various SIM card adapters. There's also various stickers, QR codes, for those of us who love stickers. In the box in the back is the power supply. This is a 110 volt AC US style, non-grounded power supply with a barrel plug connector that will attach to the Invisigigs port on the front like so. The output on this is 12 volt DC, which is the recommended input for the Invisigig. 12 volt DC can be done either via vehicle input or any style input you can, but the included adapter is for 110 volt standard US wall plug power that converts to a regulated 12 volt DC output. In the very bottom here, there is another small hole. Lift this out and it's a false bottom. And in the very bottom 
are the antennas for the Invisigig. There are four. Inside the bag is a paddle style antenna. This is an indoor omnidirectional dipole antenna with an SMA connector on the end. This is an SMA male and it can be rotated though it's connected to the cable element inside so it's not recommended to rotate too much. These also pivot at 90 and 45 degree clicks as well as straight. They do not turn this way. They cannot be turned this way. They are locked. They can only be pivoted like so. Now you want to unwrap each of your antennas to get them ready. Then you'll take your Invisigig unit and each antenna and one at a time, put them over the connector and square to the body, rotate the connector in a clockwise motion until you've tightened it down snug. Once you've done this, you can then move to the next one. We'll adjust the position of the antenna in a second. Again, take the next antenna, square to the body, onto the connector, and rotate clockwise until you get it all the way down snug. And repeat for each of the antenna connectors. You can also do this with your antenna cables. We're just going to show the included antennas with the Invisigig. If it doesn't want to line up, on the connector, just continue to rotate counterclockwise until you feel like it's lined up properly. You want to make sure you don't cross thread or misalign the threads when you're putting the antenna connector onto the Invisigig. Again, rotate clockwise until it's snug. And you want to you want to give it a little just a little snug. If it's too loose, they could just fall over. But if you pinch the bottom here with, where, the, where there's a little bit of a, a texture, it might be hard to see, where there's a little texture, you can pinch it there and rotate. Now, in order to position the antennas properly, you obviously don't want them looking like that. You can just simply rotate them in place. If this part of the connector rotates loose and does that, just simply rotate it back up until it's tight again pinch that bottom portion, rotate it, hold it, while holding this piece here, rotate the antenna to the position that you'd like. This way, you can have your antenna connect, your antennas straight up and down or however you like. Some people may want to mount the Invisigig like this, which means they'll want to put the antenna straight up. Just depends on your installation. But again, if you need to go in the direction that is against loosening the connector, pinch the connector at the base, rotate the antenna. And we'll repeat for each of the other antennas until they're in place where we want them to be. Once all of our antennas are in place where we like them, we're now ready to apply the power and the ethernet connector. Again, the included power supply is a 110 volt wall power supply. If you are not in the United States and you need a different power supply, you will need to provide it. All you need to make sure is that you have a 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 millimeter barrel plug that is a 12 volt DC power adapter. That's what it takes here on the Invisigig. So we'll take ours and free the cable here. We'll plug our power supply side into our power outlet and with power we plug into the front and immediately you'll see the red LED turns on. That red LED tells you that you do have power at this plug. 
It means nothing else other than this plug has power. So as long as you see this red LED, then you know you've got power right here. The red LED doesn't mean anything about any other connection, about the modem or anything else inside here other than there's power on this cable. Once you have that set up, you can take either your own Ethernet cable or the included one and plug this into the front port of your Invisigig. Currently, the LEDs on the bottom of the Ethernet port of the Invisigig do not operate. Instead, the two LEDs next to the power LED and above that one, those LEDs will tell you what speed the Ethernet port is operating at. The lower LED closest to the port is a green LED that tells you you're on a 100 megabit Ethernet connection. The upper LED closest to the power port tells you that you're on a gigabit, a 1,000 megabit Ethernet port. And if your Ethernet port that you are plugging into supports a 2.5 gig Ethernet connection, both of these LEDs will not light up. They may come on once or twice, but once the link is established at 2.5 gig Ethernet speed, both of these LEDs on this side will not light up anymore. When the LEDs do light up for gigabit or 100 megabit connections, they will flash from time to time, noting network traffic. The upper left LED here that has the net name next to it is actually your modem's connection LED. That LED will light up if your modem is communicating with a cellular network. It does not specifically tell you that you are online with internet data passing, but it generally means that your modem is connected to the cellular network. So if you do not have a green LED next to the net tag there, then you do not have a connection from your modem to the cellular network. And you'll need to troubleshoot from there if you think you should at that point. Once you have these connections set up, and the power is turned on, you'll want to then connect the other end of your Ethernet cable to either a routing system of choice that you believe that you can access the Invisigigs interface through, or directly to a PC, or using a USB adapter to Ethernet, you can use this to plug the Invisigig into a laptop, like so, or even directly to a phone or tablet like an iPad. Once you have it plugged in, you should see network activity on the adapter or your Invisigig. This particular adapter is a 2.5 gig Ethernet adapter, and so you'll see that there are no green LEDs on this device. Now we are connected to our laptop, to the Invisigig, and the Invisigig is set up and ready to configure and then insert your SIM card. The SIM card we'll look at next. I'm not ready to use my SIM card yet, but I can go ahead and insert it if I like. Depending on which type of plan you're using, you will have to configure this, the settings based on which plan and carrier you're using. If you open up the SIM adapter, again, this is a multi-adapter kit. The one that we are going to use is the one that has the smallest insert. You always need this full-size adapter. The one in the kit that's the smallest will never be used. This does not fit in the Invisigig. 
you need the largest outside for the Invisigig. You can also use a SIM adapter kit from a store, like a phone store or online, in case you lose or damage this kit. Or maybe you have a favorite adapter kit. As an example, I have a small nano SIM card here. And I've got the nano adapter for the Invisigig. I'm going to place the nano SIM card in alignment to the shape of the adapter. Once that's done, I make sure that this is sitting flush down into the adapter. And then I'm going to pinch the entire thing to ensure that it stays together. Turn it upside down. And then inside the SIM slot with the notch side facing inward and the metal pad side facing down, I'm going to put the SIM card into the slot, ensuring that the SIM card does not fall out of the adapter. Make sure that that SIM card is flush inside the adapter hole. Then push in until it clicks. You can hear it click, then it's set. Also to remove, push to click. In, out. I can then remove my card. Always make sure that the SIM card does not come out of the adapter or you may possibly damage the SIM slot on the Invisigig. The SIM card can be inserted as well as removed with the power still on on the Invisigig. But you will need to reset the Invisigig through the menu before the Invisigig will read the SIM card. Again, the SIM card will not be read by the Invisigig until you reset the Invisigig in the settings or restore power by removing it first and then applying it. One note, do not pull the power out from here. Always remove power from the wall. The reason is, is because though there are protective circuits inside the Invisigig, when you remove the power from here, any voltage that's inside could potentially spike in the Invisigig unit, possibly causing a failure of any of the circuitry inside the Invisigig. It's always better practice to remove power from the device from the wall. Ensure that you do that properly to ensure the longest life for your Invisigig. Now you've got everything put together, you need to log into the UI or user interface via a web browser and set up your settings for your specific carrier and SIM card plan so that you can get it online. Refer to our other documentation or video tutorials to see how to set up your Invisigig for those particular SIM cards or plans. If we don't yet have a tutorial or documentation that covers what you need, reach out to us and we'll help you out right away. Make sure you let us know what you think about the Invisigig and leave a review on the Invisigig site. And if you want to see more content, hit the contact form on our site and let us know how we can help you better with more content, more information, and better support. Until next time, take care.